Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I was just uh, practicing my Macarena in honor of spring break. Speaking of Macarena, you'll notice that is the 1996 Song of the Year. Before us, we have a list of Songs of the Year from 2009, dating all the way back to 1957. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with some of the numbers that we have here. And these numbers that you're looking at are their rankings for the week, for the first 10 weeks that they were out. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which song had the highest ranking, well, the lowest ranking technically, but the highest in value ranking, the lowest in value ranking, or the best value for their week, uh, for their 10 week span, and then we're going to find the trend for those 10 weeks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go under the max column, and we're going to put, uh, put equals max, and that will allow us to find the max value from an array of values, so we'll take the G2 through PQ, close parentheses, and boom. And because we have set up this table, it automatically figures out that we want the formulas in the rest of the columns. So now we're going to do the min. Take the first 10 data points. And now we have a min value. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take and we're going to use some something we call data bars. It's under conditional formatting on your home tab. And what we're going to do is select column Q, and we want to see in, in a graphical format the number of columns or the the value of the column. So if we go to conditional formatting, data bars, and we'll do a gradient fill. We use blue because our header is blue, and you'll see that the higher numbers have more of a gradient fill in the column than the lower ones. And now we're going to do the same thing for the min. And you'll notice because most of these are one, there's almost nothing there. So we see that the Macarena had at its best ranking a 45. What does that say about the rest of the songs from 1996, huh? Okay. So now that we've done that, we'll take and we can input a spark line for for the under the trend column. And once we once we do some of this, we'll play around with some of our options a little bit. But to do to input a spark line, we'll go to the insert tab. We'll go to line. And we'll select the data range that we want, which is G2 through P2. And the location range is going to be S2. And then we'll hit OK. And we'll see that I put input a spark line here. And to get it in the rest of the rows, we'll take and we'll drag it out through all the rows. And now we have spark lines. So now what we can do is let's say that we want the max being the worst we're going to set a conditional format on that so it's red instead of blue so we're going to go down to manage rules because we already set the rule for it we'll double click on the data bar on the rule that we want to change and we'll do a gradient fill and we'll do a red color so we'll make that red and we'll say OK and we'll apply it and we'll see that the color is red now with the blue border so now we'll go back in and we'll change that blue border to red manage rules double click on the data bar and the border will be a solid border and we'll make that the same color red we'll hit OK hit apply and hit OK and now our entire bar is red and here I mean you can barely see the bars anyway so we we won't really spend a lot of time changing the val or changing the bar colors on this one but say under the trends we want to take and change some of the settings on our sparklines. You'll notice that I inserted a tab up here called Sparkline Tools. We'll go to Design, and you can see we can create a line, we can create a column, which will change them into columns. For, for every data point, we'll put a column in there, so it's almost like a little uh, bar graph. Or we could do a win-loss, and a win-loss is generally for if you have positive and negative numbers, so we'll, they're all positive, so we'll, we'll leave it as a line. And let's say that we want to have the high point and the low point for the first 10 weeks. So you'll see that for the first, for Lady Gaga's Just Dance, it reaches high point in the second week, and it reaches low point near the end, so the 10th week. And then you'll notice for Elton John's Candle in the Wind from 1997, it was always at number one, 
for the first 10 weeks, so it just likes all the low points there. So this has been a tutorial on some Spark lines using some interesting data, and I hope you enjoy your spring break, seeing as it's coming up soon, and thank you for watching. Thank you.